So, Mike, you've captained this Eagles side the last couple of weeks against some tough opposition. Have you seen the team grow over the time period? Definitely. I mean, we two two big tests against uh, two of the best teams in the world. I mean, Ireland and Wales. You know, unfortunately, we thought we took a step backwards last weekend against Wales, a good Welsh side. But uh, you know, we're coming together. We got to get back on the horse today. Get ready for the Churchill Cup. And uh, I imagine you've had a chance to look at some video of the uh, Pumas on the weekend. The Jaguars, I guess, are now called. Uh, what are your first impressions of that team that you're going to be facing? They're going to be a tough side. You know, they're going to be uh, really aggressive at the breakdown. So you know, we know we got to go in aggressive. We got to take it to them and uh, make a statement early. Um, looking at your first two weeks, what, what do you think your, your main areas of uh, improvement needed to be? We definitely need to focus on, uh, you know, keeping keeping possession. I know something that killed us against Wales was uh, we had a few turnovers, and, you know, at, at test level rugby, you know, those turnovers will kill you. It cost 20 points a game. So, you know, I mean, those could be the point differentials and uh, make and lose the game. So, you know, we've definitely got to hold on to the ball a little better, and it's something that we're going to work on now here at training. Um, and what's the difference having Todd Clever back on this side? Uh, Todd's a tremendous player. I mean, you know, he just just his presence just brings a whole bunch of energy to the team. I mean, you know, he I don't know when he'll he'll uh, suit up, but as soon as he does, I know he's going to bring a whole lot of aggression and he's going to be a great player, a great asset to the squad. All right, we'll tear it up against Argentina. Thank you. All right. So Todd, a long season in South Africa, and now you're back in the USA, and more work ahead. Yeah, no, the Super 14 just ended a couple weeks ago, and we had a one-off game against the British Irish Lions. Uh, no, it's the first part of the season. I go back to the Cray Cup, but uh, no, so far so good. I really enjoy uh, the Southern Hemisphere uh, style of rugby, so I'm looking forward to getting back down there and uh, obviously you know, my time here with the Eagles. Uh, not that it's ever been an issue, but do you feel you're in one of the more fitter times of your career? Oh, I mean, you'd like to think so. I mean, after a long season, you, you are a little bit battered, and, and uh, you know, the, the body takes a toll. But, uh, you know, it's about maintaining. So, you know, I'm still waking up early and trying to get some, uh, some extra fitness sessions in and, uh, you know, trying to stay on top of the game. Uh, second coach in uh, basically a year, but uh, Eddie's got a great uh, background with USA Rugby. Um, is it tough to work under a new coach and find out how he likes things? Yeah, I mean, I just met him face to face uh, ju just yesterday, but uh, we've been in communication quite a lot through uh, through emails and, and phone calls and stuff like that. But uh, you know, he's bringing in a different uh, different things to to the, to the team, and uh, it looks like it's going to be positive. I've I've spoken to a lot of the players, and uh, you know, we're receiving them very well, and and we look forward to moving forward. How much does this team improve week over week playing Ireland and Wales, and now getting ready for this challenge against Argentina? Yeah, it was a hard time uh, following the team. I didn't get to. I wasn't able to watch the games live, but I was able to uh, to get videos and stuff. And you know, there's a lot of uh, good things that they're they're implying on on the field. And uh, it's just about getting better, each, like you said, each week. And uh, you know, the the final final thing is you know fourth and the 11th of July against the home and away series of Canada. Right now, that is looming large, and uh, this time around, looks like uh, U.S. and Canada won't be playing in, in the Churchill Cup. So, makes things a little interesting. Yeah, no, I mean, you know, you don't want to play them three times in, <laughs> instead of two. So we'll have a good chance to play, I think, uh, you know, Georgia um, uh, and then Argentina A, things like that. So it's a, it's going to be a good battle for us and it's a test. And, you know, uh, I think Georgia's ranked higher than us in, in the national, uh, the, the the ranking system. So it's a, a good good thing to get our confidence up uh, if we t take it to them and, and, you know, have a chance to, uh, to, to pump a couple of spots. Uh, good luck against the Jaguars. Uh, thanks very much. So, Eddie, at the helm of this uh, New Look Eagles team in 2009, uh, coming in as a coach the way you have, what was the first order of business? Well, I had to really find out what players I had available and where they were at the moment. Uh, we had difficulties with that because, we have, like, like uh, every other country, we have players playing overseas. So I tried to get a handle on the domestic guys. I tried to get the program together for the summer. It's a very intense period for us. It's seven games in seven weeks, which puts a lot of stress on the domestic guys to get time off work and away from family. So it was a lot about getting my feet in the ground, finding out who players I had, building my staff, and then planning a, a summer strategy. And uh, we're right in the middle of that at the moment, executing that. Now, uh, your first game at the helm was against your former country, Ireland. Uh, that must have been a bit of an odd feeling. It's quite a strange, you know, when you're, you've been working for guys for, uh, you know, almost eight years uh, and suddenly they're playing against you. Uh, and uh, But it was strange, but I, I wasn't that emotional about it because it was my first game with the Eagles and I had other things to do, you know. I had to get a game plan ready, I had to get it organised for that and I didn't dwell on the fact it was Ireland, you know, it, but it was good to see the Irish guys uh, afterwards and have a beer with them, you know, it was great to see them. But uh, on the day I was totally focused on the Eagles and I was very happy with the performance. 
Now, uh, on the weekend, you were busy with whales, but uh, you still had a chance to see some video of the Jaguars taking on uh, England. Uh, what are your assessments of the, that Argentina team? Well, it's a strong Argentinian team. Um, I think they play a game that's very much like the, 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 the Puma side. The Jaguars and the Pumas are very much alike in the, the style of rugby. Uh, they're very capable of, of running with the ball. They have a very physical pack and they retain the ball very well. They're defensively very aggressive. So it's pretty much what you'd be used to playing as any Argentinian team. Um, going forward for us, we're going to make a lot, a lot of changes. We've had two test games on two consecutive weekends, so now we've got to dig, dig down deep into the squad, put a lot of new faces on the field and see how they go. So it's another challenge, different type of challenge, but still another big challenge for us. And looking to uh, July 4th and July 11th, that's, uh, boy, if you, you take that series, that's a huge difference to your team, isn't it? Well, you know, that's our focus, no more than Canada, I guess. You know, we're both playing off to get directly into Rugby World Cup, and, and whoever gets out of that uh, that series of events and, and gets into World Cup is a great relief. You know, you're in there, you know you've got two years to plan towards the, towards the World Cup now. And we're trying to do that. You know, we, America's record against Canada in recent years hasn't been very good, uh, so it's a big challenge for us. But we're going to give it our best shot here going forward, and, and that's what this last two weeks and the next three weeks in the Churchill Cup is all about, is trying to build a squad and trying to build a plan for, for playing against Canada. Uh, you've stated that uh, one of the big issues with this uh, young Eagles team is just turnovers, giving away the ball. Is that something that can be solved just by being together and, and repetition? Yeah, there's no doubt about it that you know the more time used to playing with each other. Um, the two things on Saturday that killed us against Wales, and, and I knew there were possibilities. Was one is that Wales played the game at such a pace and such width on their game that it was very hard to contain them. You know, they they got that width and speed on the ball that we were going to make a struggle defensively, and we struggled in the first half with that. But I think we 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 reeled that in in the second half, but then with, on the other side of the football, we just coughed up the ball. And, and again, a team like Wales at that level will punish you severely. So I, I said on the weekend, you know, it was a very harsh lesson, but a very fair lesson for us. And something we've got to, you know, learn from and go forward and say we can fix this. And I guess like any team would, we're, we're back in the trenches this week trying to put the fixes in. All right, well, good luck against uh, Argentina and welcome back to America. Thank you very much. So, Pat, after a big win like this, uh, it's got to be a vindication of uh, many weeks of hard work and just putting it all together. You you seem pretty satisfied on Saturday. Yeah, I think, uh, like you say, it's been a couple hard weeks and we had a, a couple tough games there, uh, or tough finishes against Ireland and Wales. Uh, and to see it all come together was was pretty good. We, we've looked at the game and, and we've been able to see the things that we've been working at for a few weeks and see the success of them. Uh, so that's that's a real big pat on the back to the to the guys and, and the work they've done. Does it also change the uh, attitude about a game when you're not on defense for 80 minutes that you're actually going forward with the ball? Yeah, I think we looked at it and we probably made uh, half as many tackles as we would normally be in a position to make in a game, and, and for us that's pretty big. We you know we play a lot of defense normally. Um, also, you know we we scored some nice tries and we probably left a few on the field, and it's not too often that we do both in the same game. So, uh, yeah, that was, that was kind of a neat spot for some of the guys to be in, for sure. Uh, since the Wales game, though, that's uh, been something that's happening a lot more. You uh, set up a nice one, uh, Fred Fairhurst and Sean Duke scoring in the second half against Wales, and then, you know, having five there against Georgia. Um, it really just changes the tempo on the team. Yeah, I think so. You know, we've talked a lot, uh, especially since Kieran been in, about, about playing attacking rugby and, and really making the most of those opportunities when you do crack the defense. Uh, or when you do see a defender in the wrong spot. And I think that's, you know, it takes a long time to, to get that mentality and get those skills and abilities in the team. And I think they're they're really coming now. Would you say the try that Nanyak Dala got from the unbelievable pass by DTH sort of epitomizes the fact that you have the faith that you're going to be there for each other? Yeah, we have the old reverse tomahawk there by DTH. Uh, you know, DTH said after the game when he knew Nanyak, he could hear Nanyak support him inside. And, he said if there's one guy he feels most comfortable throwing that pass to, it's Nanyak because of Nanyak's, you know, natural attacking flair and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I think it's pretty good. And, you know, maybe in the past we'd have got bundled into touch there and, and said, oh, hey, that was pretty good. Look, we're down on their five. And now we're, we get down there, we want to come in with points and, and guys are, uh, are able to pull those passes off and make it happen. Now, by the fact that it was 42-10 didn't uh, mean that it was an easy game by any stretch. It was a pretty feisty bunch the Georgians brought to the game. Yeah, for sure. They were a big, big, hard bunch. And, uh, you know, they play all their, their rugby in France. And a few of the guys that have, in our team that have played over there 
certainly recognize a few of their tactics in around the, the set pieces and the, and the breakdowns and stuff. Um, they were hard. They kept going. They uh, were certainly not going to roll over and, and, and die or, or give us any free free ball or, or uh, you know free breakdowns or anything like that. The guys are, are banged up as they should be after a game like that. But um, you know when you win, it doesn't hurt quite so much. I think. All right now, three weeks ago, you played Ireland in Vancouver. Declan Kidney still in the uh, coaching role, and nine guys that were in that Canada game. Uh, you kind of licking your chops in an opportunity lost in, in Ireland because it was quite a close match up to a certain point, and all the progress that you've made. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, they're they're coming off the end of a pretty high tempo season. That was our first game together since November, whereas that group had been together. Uh, you know, for the Six Nations and things like that. Uh, you know, some of those guys are down the Lions, but but the whole group had been together, whereas that was our, you know, our first time together. Um, and we've looked at it and, and we've identified some mistakes that, that we made, as I'm sure they've done the same for their team. Um, you know, there's there's a few guys we would like to see again, and, and we're, yeah, we're looking forward to getting the chance to do it, and especially if we feel like we got the ball rolling a bit, as opposed to when we were we were just getting it started and back in Vancouver. How are you doing with the uh, captaincy uh, with you all the time? Are you getting more comfortable with that role? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it was kind of a weird spot for me. Uh, you know, I look back at the captains I played under and, and tried to sort of emulate some of the, the the things they did or the the way they approached it. And uh, <clears throat> for a while there, I kind of struggled to, f to find my own way of doing it. Uh, I've really been uh, benefited from the fact that some of the guys have, uh, the other guys have really stepped up their leadership as well. Um, you know, I think having DTH in a bit closer to the action has has been great. Uh, he's a real vocal player as well. I think maybe a year and a half off probably gets him in that position. And uh, you know, Pritch, uh, he's he's a real vocal guy, and and he's contributed some really good stuff. Uh, a guy like Adam Kleberger, I've had the benefit of playing with him for a long time, and and I think his his leadership abilities, he'll probably tell you he doesn't have them, but I think he's he's a born leader. That guy, and a guy like Ander and Eddie too. You know. So we've got some some leaders in some some real important positions as well, uh, and and they've all made it a lot easier for me. And uh, so hopefully I've been able to pick a few tricks up along the way. Yeah. Tell me about the uh, evolution of Coach Kieran Crowley with this team because it seems like the confidence is just growing day by day, and just how he leads the sessions and talks to the guys. Uh, the, there's a real confidence growing about this whole team. Yeah, yeah. I'm you know I'm not uh, I'm not so sure it's entirely a result of Kieran. I mean, uh, Rick uh, really had some some beliefs about about empowering players and, and, and accountability and things like that. You know, not totally dissimilar to the way the way Kieran approaches it. Um, I think uh, the, there's some new players in the team, uh, and maybe that that brings a new confidence. You know, a year ago we went down on that November tour, and half the team had never, you know, played more than three or four games. A lot of guys had never played any international rugby, and now they've had a couple of games under their belt. You know, we've taken some wall pains and. So confidence is growing that way, and you know, Kieran, Kieran's quick to pack guys on the back, and and uh, even after a, a tough game, uh, you know, the I Ireland and Wales loss, he he's got a great ability to pull the positives out of it, and uh, and I think that at you know reinforcing those positives and showing hey the things we are practicing are working. Here's an example of him working in a game, and look what it's got us. And I think that's that's built a fair bit of confidence in the team. All right, well, good luck against Ireland A on uh, Wednesday and maybe another W. Yeah, okay. Thanks a lot, Doug. We'll for it. Okay, bye.